she acts like she's better than me now. Oh, I'm not wishing that on her, but she needs to get real. I'm sorry I need to come more prepared as you can see I'm gonna be reading from my phone today and as you can see we got a different little background I'm editing a vlog so if you want to know where I'm at I'll be included but I I think the fit the wall like it matches the hair was giving but I'm at a hotel right now and I was like honestly y'all know I hate filming in the house one but two I was like this background this outfit the hair is all given so i should just sit down and do an episode because i need to do one anyway for this week if you hear a background noise that's like the ac over there let's get started heads up if one of my lights go out we're just gonna keep it cute keep it cute keep it cute keep it cute this is very last minute but i brought all my equipment so we're gonna get it do and get it done get it done here's a hair update so cute so cute guys i'm very proud i'm very proud of my um updates and how my hair's gone but let's get started i love this background guys this is so cute i wish i could recreate uh what should we read about today what should we give advice on if this is your first time clicking one of my videos zanji does chat oh my god zanji does chat is my podcast zanji does tea is my advice series so for today we are going to be doing you know i go on reddit and i get stories that i'm have permission to read um because a lot of reddit stories you do not have authorization to use you can get a copyright so if you're a youtuber and you want to do this just make sure that where you get your stories from you can reuse yes yeah, so i use reddit for now but my goal is to get email submissions and the email will be on the screen down below and throughout the video like i said my goal is to retire reddit one day and just do submissions but for now i have to show y'all what i got to get how what advice I, I can offer how good my advice is so that's what we use right for now <sighs> anyway let's just read three let me put my phone to charge i'll take it guys oh this is really interesting because the person that wrote this is 26 i'm 25 but this person has a 12 year old daughter so the title of this is my daughter 12 year old just told me she has a boyfriend okay so my stepdaughter oh stepdaughter actually this is even more interesting my stepdaughter told me that she had a crush on a boy in her class and i thought it was so exciting and cute that i wanted to tell her dad that dad is 31 it, but i also didn't want to break her trust since she felt comfortable enough to tell me so i did it well a few days later he is now her boyfriend and they're 12 so this point at this point that just means liking each other and maybe we will have this boy come over to hang out or whatever i think that's super cute and i really want to tell her dad but i still don't want to break her trust but i also don't want to break his trust because i know he would want to know this even if it's one of those middle scorers chicks that ends in a week should i tell him or not comment up what you think i'm gonna read the comments first tell her she should tell her dad build it up like it's a cool thing to tell him but i wouldn't break her trust when i was 12 i had a girlfriend and we were together for like 10 months but it wasn't anything serious have you asked her why she hasn't told her dad is it even safe to tell her dad i had a friend going growing up who would get called things like just for being friends with the boy at 14. okay so this person didn't respond to anything so this is really multifaceted i feel like but one stepdaughter i mean i'm not trying to erase the relationship but like what's the closeness there is she closer to you or closer to her dad can we somehow get the mom involved to blood mo mother involved and maybe see if she could soften the blow like i don't i think there's a reason she she told you first and not the dad you know what i mean like why um but i like what that person said just be like you should tell your dad because you know maybe he wants to this and that and i find it sweet that you're you know forthcoming about it because some people would be like you're way too young like blah, blah blah and i i have the same mindset too about it where it's like it's probably innocent it's probably whatever but honestly i don't know how many when i have all kids like i i was raised by very strict parents 
and I'm doing all the work and therapy to not be the same way. But she's like, invite him over. But I was like, ooh, not the invite over. Like, you got, you know, like that comes out of me where it's like, no boys are over at the house, blah, blah, blah. But they seem to know what they're doing. And I, uh, uh, outside of that, I love that still she's trusting you um, as her stepmother. Like, she's trusting you. She's involving you in her life. She's not excluding you or feeling like, you know, like it seems like she's trying to bond with you. And I think that's very sweet. But what do you guys think? Comment down below. I think that was a really cute, innocent one. The next one is, how would you handle a best friend exhibiting this behavior? I've had the same best friend since we were six years old, so almost 27 years now. She's always struggled with finding who she is, both physically and mentally. She recently, maybe within the past two years, went through her stage of finding herself. She's extremely happy in a loving relationship and making moves to better herself and her life. I'm happy for her. However, I'm now just beginning that stage myself. I just got out of a bad relationship that I'm really struggling with and I don't really know who I am. But here's a kicker. She acts like she's better than me now. Oh, when we go to the gym together, she's always one upping me, proving she can look heavier than me if I lift the same weight as her. I called her when my boyfriend broke up with me and she hasn't reached out once since then to check in on me. She constantly goes out with her other friends but literally never asks me to hang out. I called her crying today and told her I'm really struggling and asked if she could hang out because I needed my best friend. She told me that she couldn't hang out because she has other plans. I don't know if I'm being selfish, but if it were me and my best friend called me crying, especially fresh out of a breakup, I would try my best to be there for her. She then texted me and told me to just block my ex. I said, I'm not ready to do that. And her response was, well, I've always been able to do it. Well, I've always been able to do it right way, so I have no advice for you. Okay. Because <sighs> my thing is, I was first at, at first thinking like, Maybe it's in your head, maybe, you know, sometimes when we're in a low place, we feel like we're being targeted, we're being attacked, or we're feeling bullied or insecure, and sometimes we might project that through other people, but she really wrapped it up for you, or at the end of the sentence, well, I've always been able to do it the right way, so I have no advice for you, like, okay, that's really cute that you feel like, you know what I mean, like, she's not being a good friend, and great for her great for her that she assumes and believes that this is gonna her life is gonna be perfect now that she's figured it out we are all going through a constant a constant pace of changing a constant state of changing and she's in a high point in her life while you're in a low one and her i'm not wishing bad on her but she needs to get real her state will also go down too and then you're the because when you're up and she's down you're gonna be the asshole if you mimic the if you give the same energy back because one thing about me is i give the same energy back so but again working on that let's read the comments she doesn't sound like a good friend you can't make her do anything she doesn't want to do maybe reach out to people who are more receptive maybe you've outgrown this friendship you have every right to be hurt yeah and she was there for her at her low so now that you're high up you can't be there for me interesting and my thing is too I feel like I don't know like I you have to wonder like okay when I leave the picture are you also gonna just um go back to your dark place cause don't forget I helped you so I'm a big part of whatever your positive stuff that you're going through is so let's keep it cute um I, I don't know and then breakups are fucking hard like and y'all have been friends for like almost 27 years like this really sounds like little kids like if y'all were teenagers i don't know like i don't even know what to say like what would you what would you guys do like i'm quick to confront somebody and cut somebody out and be like what's the problem like I, I did this for you, I did that, like, and now you can't do this and this for me, like, what's the issue, do I need to cut you off, do you not want to be friends no more, because that's, that's, that's how I am, like, save each other's time, I would confront her and be like, what's the problem, I mean, it's being honest with you, 
I'd be like, what's the problem? Like, but I'm like, I'd be like, what's the problem? Do you have something to say? Because you're acting kind of funny. You know, what would you guys do? I don't know. I don't know. And then what she would say after that would determine for me if I'd want to be her friends or not. But what else is there to say? She could just be her way out of the question or be like, or be blunt. Like, I think I'm better than you. I think you're a loser. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd hate that. I'd hate that. I'd hate that. All right. So let's do the last one. And this one's kind of long. My wife doesn't want to stay home with the baby. What to do? What do we think of that title to start? I know it's probably controversial. Controversial. You're like, well, let's read it. Me and my wife are recently married with a four-month-old baby. Our daughter wasn't planned. In fact, my wife had said that she didn't want to have a child until she was at least in her 30s. But things didn't work out that way. And we found out that we were expecting when my wife was very late in her pregnancy. Meaning, she didn't really have a choice. What do you mean by that? Of course, that was a huge shock to both of us. But my wife took it the hardest. We ended up marrying while she was heavily pregnant. She didn't have the best day. Our wedding day is very much a sore subject for her. Um, we're really not allowed to speak about it. Um, in the little time that we had to prepare for our daughter, I naively agreed to be a, the stay-at-home parent because my wife wants to work. She's been to university, has a bachelor's, bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and she can teach. Like she has a teaching degree. What's it called? Certification. However, she found out that she was pregnant before she was due to start work and could no longer accept the position. While I, on the other hand, have been working since I was 15, have a pretty high wage. So he's just breaking down wages, but I don't know how much that really is, but whatever. To me, it seems ridiculous for me to give him my job. So she's 24, he, 24K, he's 37, yeah. Um, I did this because I wanted to support my wife. This isn't the case of me thinking she belongs at home to, and having to stay with children, baking pies or whatever, traditional, you know. But more so what's, what's, but more so what, where the hell did I leave up? What's financially better for our family? Paying for childcare would completely wipe out her wage and eat into mine, especially with the hours that we both would have to work and commute. And me giving up my job would see us, up my job, would see us struggling to pay our bills. In either scenario, it wouldn't be a case of just tightening our belts. It would be a struggle. We have a mortgage, two cars, and some debt from COVID. Um, our families aren't able to help us out with childcare either. They don't live close enough, and some of them work full time. She point blank is refusing to stay home with the baby any longer and is applying for jobs. She's using the defense of that her entire life will have been a waste if she has to stay at home, that she's trained. She's trained all of her life for a job, but she really wants to be told that she has to be a stay-at-home mom. She thinks that she isn't going to be able to get to teaching she does if she doesn't do it now, right this second, because there will be a gap between her graduation and looking for employment she's also wary of places being biased against newly qualified teachers as is she wants to work and isn't looking at the bigger picture i do understand why she's upset i do understand why she wants to work and i understand her frustration i know this isn't what she or we planned but it's what what's best for our family right now we have to make sacrifices and i have and will in the future the only difference now is that me sacrificing my job means that we will be struggling and in debt Whereas her sacrificing her job temporarily means we get to at least be comfortable and have stability. Um, first things first, I'm concerned. I just have this feeling like she don't like that baby. I don't know. I'm not a mom, guys. But I feel like you always see new moms kind of like be sad that they have to leave the baby to go back to her. But I know people are different. People are different. But somebody commented, let her work, get daycare. If it takes all her pay, so be it. It will pay off in time as her career will build in in her happiness. Okay, that's true. That's what somebody said. That's what we did. We both worked and 90% of my money went to child care and it was worth it. I was a happy mom. I would have been a shit show if I had to stay at home with them Monday through Friday. One day, his school age, I got a job with mother's hours. And sometimes they went to after school clubs so I could pick them up later. So, so that's the answer thread right over. I mean, yeah, that's a really good point. And sometimes people 
are scared of daycare or the idea of it or it not working out you know the child being mistreated um what i have to say is do your research i think daycare can be a really great thing my only concern is i've never seen daycare for infants like four months like that's okay wait maybe i don't know or maybe a babysitter a nanny you know so that while you're y'all aren't home there's a nanny there but i guess that is the reality too is like when you have a baby that you didn't financially plan for a parent gotta stay behind or something and i think that's what's happening here no sorry a parent don't have to stay behind but more so y'all have to make ends meet and i really encourage everybody to be financially stable before having kids because i just feel like it's such a there it is i told y'all that light was gonna shit out hold on all right guys how are we looking I think we can make this work it's just a little lighter but um what i was saying was having a child with no money is probably a nightmare and that's why i'm personally waiting you know because people are like girls like okay when the baby come when the baby come because you know i'm in a long-term relationship and that's beautiful and all but right now the financial situation is you know and then for me personally it'll be hard because i would have wanted a baby i wouldn't but she's probably smart and she's probably like maybe she doesn't want to leave a baby either but he just didn't mention it so i was kind of like hello it's sweet that he's being given and giving and trying to be this person but also like he could if he really is maybe the one parent that doesn't want to leave a baby alone he should consider talking to his like you know manager and be like can i work from home please because whatever some managers granted some don't um but let's see someone said i'm a stay-at-home mom i gave up my teaching career to raise my kids i sometimes regret it Somebody said, and I'll leave it off on this, they said, I would like to add and emphasize that it is extremely important for a stay-at-home parent to really, really, really want to be a stay-at-home parent or the child is going to suffer along with the parent. It's hard being with a baby all day. It is. It's mentally taxing. The fact that she doesn't desperately want to do it means she probably shouldn't if working is an option. Her mental health also matters. Not wanting to be home with a baby has nothing to do with how much you love your child it's simply not for everyone you see and that's what i mean it's like i've never been in that situation i've been a nanny i've been an older sister i've watched kids but i've never had to be in that moment of like okay save up money be a mom you know what i mean like you know yeah someone said in the long run your wife continuing to work will put you both in a much better financial situation um yeah that's also a, a fact to like making sure sometimes in life we have to like take a risk for a reward and definitely i mean not only will it help the partner but it'll help the baby the family and maybe when she's in her 30s and money is better you know the bond will be stronger and then maybe she'll be ready to be I don't know the right words for it sometimes i feel bad reading the parent ones because i feel like i don't really have much of an input because that my first thought was like why don't you want to be with your baby but you know there's probably a mom watching this who's like girl it ain't that simple and please don't get offended with my responses in any of my episodes actually because it's like i'm speaking through my experiences i'm not a licensed professional i'm not a licensed therapist i am just talking through my experiences through my psychology research i did go to college for psychology i wanted to be a therapist but then i said no and then i just pursued my art degree but you know take what i say with a grain of salt comment down below because i just want to understand everyone's perspective on this especially this last one because i know that if i was in that position yeah if i was her i would like honest honest honestly i would be depressed being at work too though 
like you know what I mean like it, and I think it's personal preference like I feel like like for me I've always wanted to be a mom period whatever age I mean yeah obviously not young but you know like when I say young like not 15 and stuff but um no shame no shade if you are but um that's I've always wanted to experience motherhood and being a mom one day but when I imagine that I'm financially stable I I'm hopefully in my dream career I have a great relationship with my partner we have a home we can feed our child you know what I'm saying but it is probably so much more tough when you're raising a human and then you also have to take care of yourself and find a way to because your baby can't go to work for you like girl I'm not doing it today can you go to work for me today please no like that's just not a thing so anyways um And I feel, I feel like, first of all, I, I brushed past this. She should go to therapy because she doesn't even, can't even talk about her wedding because it was such a, like, sad moment because it's clear it didn't go the way she wanted it to. And I feel like she has to give herself some grace that, unfortunately, we can't prepare for every single thing in life. However, I feel like as a partner, you should be more reassuring to her and be like, hey, maybe if y'all got the funds, I want you to go back to where you go to work and she makes the funds and y'all prepare for maybe a smaller recreation of the wedding a way that she would have liked i know it's expensive but something you know but she definitely needs to go to therapy if she can't even talk about that moment because weddings are supposed to be sweet and that memorial wedding is supposed to be amazing and the fact that she, you guys shared this memory and you would love to talk about it but she doesn't want to that also you're also suffering like you know so i think she maybe even couples therapy too but i think she needs therapy as well and maybe parent maybe she should talk to other moms who are in her situation and hope possibly pursuing the same career um i know when i feel like i need guidance or i'm feeling lost and like nobody else can understand um or everyone's telling me to do one thing when i want to do another i just try to find other people in my as close as i can to my scenario like my situation and hear them out hear what they suggested what worked for them and i'm sure there's mom groups woman her age in that same career field and she i think she needs a friend right now and i don't know maybe you need a friend too like if you're the husband maybe you gotta hit up one of your boys or join a data group stay at home dad group or see what can come of it and i mean of course at the, at the end of the day wage gaps are so fucking annoying but that's not what this one is really about but more so it's like her career was put on pause like it seems like it's already established um and there's nothing more challenging to a relationship than financial strain financial imbalances um so with that being said i definitely think therapy is on um, a great suggestion because i think a lot of causes for a divorce are finances um let me look it up i am not married by the way let me see causes hello there used to be just three like now there's seven okay well lack of commitment financial issues and bad communication and trust issues and sexual intimacy and sometimes actually having kids with your partner sometimes might you guys might not be compatible in that way um but i'm wishing them well if you're going through any similar situation and any of the three stories i read today um email me at the email down below please be detailed if you want to see a video of how to submit it's actually really easy just email me um all i say is to keep it anonymous and you know make it easy to read all of that jazz but thank you for watching today's episode i'm sorry if it wasn't that juicy or if i didn't come with my greatest wisdom advice okay i was like let me just pick up the camera and try i'm not in my advice mode but i i wanted to try for you guys and i feel like maybe i helped y'all in some way plus we gotta take advantage of this background
and the hair and fit. But um, yeah, I'm also like kind of anxious because I have to check out soon from the hotel that I'm at. So I'm like, okay, hurry up. So sorry if it felt rushed. Sorry if it wasn't my best episode. Um, but yeah, I can expect another one. Again, you can watch all of my Zangie Does Tea episodes. Um, they're all in the playlist. And if you want to watch my other videos, I do hair videos and life advice videos. I did forget to mention that in the beginning. But if you want to see my hair videos, my hair journey, I did the big chop. This is a result of my big chop. Um, I'm on a curly hair journey. So it's all 100% healthy, natural curl. I um, haven't dyed them, nothing. Um, all I've done is little haircuts and stuff. So if you want to see hair content like i said all on my channel all playlists and if you want to listen to my podcast you can hear it on my youtube or apple music or spotify podcast i think of apple apple what is it apple podcast spotify podcast apple spotify um and you can follow me on my socials i'm on a bunch of things i'll put it on the screen right here thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one and again email below don't forget to like and subscribe and go binge watch my videos i have a lot of fucking videos like go binge watch them all right bye